Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob here. Listen, the uh, in Isaiah 13, it was speaking about a lot of destruction. But here in Isaiah 14, we read something a little bit more pleasant towards those that the lo the Lord loves. Now, sometimes you have promise of restoration, but then you also have, in the same verse, the promise of judgment. So sometimes the Lord will be, you know, talking about his people who love him and their restoration, and then in the same verse, you'll talk about the destruction of the wicked. You know, so, you know, because in verse 1, it says, uh, for the Lord will have mercy on Jacob and will yet choose Israel and set them in their own land and the strangers shall be joined with them and they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. You know, and then when you get to the end, um, towards the end, you read uh, verse 22 and verse 23, um, you know, the... the um, Verse 25, the Assyrians that took northern Israel captive and declared war against them and killed a lot of them, uh, they're destroyed. And then Babylon came later and was God's judgment against southern Judah and Jerusalem. Uh, after 70 years, they were destroyed. And then the Lord rose up another power, which was... Uh, the Persians. Now, perhaps you've seen the movie, what is it, the, the 300, about the uh, Spartan Empire? Well, the Spartans, not they weren't an empire. They were just a city-state in Greece. And um, what was it, the Battle of Thermopylae, where they held the huge, huge Persian army at bay. Well, that's what they were talking about at a later time period. It, it, this was not... The Persians that re, uh, conquered Babylon, that re, uh, allowed Judah to return back to Jerusalem, that was not the same time period, to the best of my knowledge. But the, uh, the movie The 300 was... Uh, I think that was a later date. I'm not exactly sure. So what happened was the Persian army, Persia conquered a lot of territory. And then uh, you had Greece, which uh, you had Sparta, and then you had Athens. And uh, they were kind of like brothers that were competing against each other for uh, power. Athens was the naval power, and they actually had a much smaller fleet than the Persians, but they were able to defeat the Persians for the most part. They did a lot of damage. Now, what about the Persians? Well, after they collapsed, then you had Alexander of Macedonia, which to me is part of Greece. I mean, the guy spoke Greek, okay? And uh, he is referred to in history as Alexander the Great. And from what I've read, he never lost a battle. Never lost a battle, even against incredible odds. He conquered Persia, conquered from India all the way to Greece, to northern Africa, conquered Egypt. Perhaps you've heard of the city in Egypt called Alexandria. They named it in honor of Alexander, uh, who was a Greek-speaking Macedonian, which I think he was Greek. But the thing is, uh, 
Alexandria had a library it was considered the greatest library in the world and um, after Alexander died I think he was like in his early 30s when he died some say that he was a egomaniac and he proclaimed himself to have godlike characteristics which the Lord doesn't like sharing his glory with another person you know I think that was the devil's problem but Alexander when he died his kingdom was so vast that four of his generals uh, divided it up and ruled four different areas and of course they had some uh, things that they fought over uh, you can read about that in the book of Daniel it's in cryptic language I'm not even sure I understand it very well um, but after after Greece and Alexander's kingdom fell along came well the Romans came along and that's why they fell uh, and then the Romans took Pilate and King Herod and put them in charge. But for what I understand, several hundred years, uh, the area of Palestine, Israel, the land of Canaan, that was conquered by the Romans, well, it had been under Greek rule for from what I understand, like several hundred years, I think 300 and something years, it was the common language of commerce. And that's what usually happens. Uh, if you get conquered by a country, I mean, the country doesn't want you speaking in a language that they don't, under, uh, don't understand, so they will make you learn the conqueror's language. And that's why Greek was the language of commerce when the Romans came along later at a later date and conquered the area. Now the thing is, if you wanted to deal with the government, it's possible that the governor would know Greek. It's possible. But by the time your business got from your area to Rome it had to be in Latin but a lot of the people in Rome knew Greek I mean it was just it was the common language period for hundreds of years I'm not sure exactly how long I think it was like 350 years that area had spoken Greek and then you wonder why the New Testament was written in Greek it was the common language of the area that's why you know, Hebrew, I mean, when Jesus was on the cross, he said, Eli, Eli, Lamach, Sabachthani. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. And don't try to have people that speak Yiddish try to correct my Hebrew, because it's not the same. Yiddish is not Hebrew. People that know Yiddish cannot read Hebrew. They cannot read the Bible in the Hebrew. They just, they can't. But when Jesus was on the cross, he said those words. And the Jews said, let's see if Elijah will come and uh, save him. But that's not what he was saying. He was saying, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? You see, they did. the Jews didn't even understand Jesus speaking Hebrew. Some will say it's Aramaic, you know, which is a dialect of Hebrew. Uh, you know, I'm not an expert on these things. I just have a general background. But, you know, here it is. If they didn't understand it almost 2,000 years ago, I mean, you know, you, you can't tell me those Eastern Europeans that speak Yiddish, they don't, they cannot read Hebrew. Oh, they can memorize some things for their 
bar mitzvah, but that's that's all they do. But Greek was the common language because of Alexander, who they call the Great. He was a great strategist. He was a great uh, killing machine. But uh, was he great in the eyes of the Lord? That's the important thing. And the, uh, the answer is no. Nevertheless, the Lord put him in charge. Now, uh, in Joel chapter 3, we read, For behold, in those days and in that time, when I shall bring again the captivity of Judah and Jerusalem, verse 2, I will also gather all nations and will bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat, and will plead with them there for my people and for my heritage Israel, whom they have scattered among the nations and parted my land. And they have cast lots for my people and have given a boy for a harlot and sold a girl for wine that they might have drink. Now they're talking about, you know, selling the people into slavery. Yea, and what have ye to do with me, O Tyre and Zidon? Now, Tyre and Sidon were associated with the Phoenicians, and so was the tribe of Dan. And a lot of people don't know it, but the uh, tribe of Dan is, in history, associated with the, um, the country that they themselves call Denmark. The English call them Denmark, uh, Sweden. And Norway and uh, you know the Vikings but the Phoenicians were tied in with Tyre and Zidon and they also were tied in with the Canaanites so you know there's a lot of mixing going on back in them days I can't even possibly keep up with it just absolutely impossible uh, so let's see verse 4 Joel chapter 3. Yea, and what have ye to do with me, O Tyre and Zidon? They were part of the Phoenicians, right? And all the coasts of Palestine. Will ye render me a recompense? And if ye recompense me swiftly and speedily, will I return your recompense upon your own head? Because ye have taken my silver and my gold and have carried into your temples my goodly pleasant things. So evidently, uh, they had taken the Lord's silver and gold from his temple and carried it into the temple of their gods. Verse 4. Here's the punchline. The children also of Judah and the children of Jerusalem have ye sold, have ye sold unto the Grecians that ye might remove them far from their border. So, the thing is, the Phoenicians had taken the children of Judah and Jerusalem and sold them to the Grecians, which is the Greeks. Is it possible that the Greeks were mixed with tribe of Judah? I think so. Judah, remember, Judah was first in war. Judah was the warlike tribe. I mean, if you ask me, they they matched the Spartans perfectly. Um, you know, three hundred what was it, three hundred or six hundred or whatever the what they were, uh, held off the Persian Persian army for like three days until they were surrounded on all sides. They were incredible warriors. So, with that in mind, let's go and. Continue on Isaiah chapter 14. And I have a, we'll start on the commentary on that. Hello, this is a quick commentary on Isaiah 14. The uh, modern Bibles like to 
take liberties and the deceivers love to explain away some of the important things in Isaiah 14. All right, so let's start in Isaiah 14, verse 1. For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob. Now, Jacob's name was changed to Israel. For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob and will yet choose Israel and set them in their own land. And the strangers shall be joined with them and they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. And the people shall take them and bring them to her place. And the house of Israel shall possess them in the land of the Lord for servants and handmaids. And they shall take them captives, whose captives they were, and they shall rule over their oppressors. And it shall come to pass in the day that the Lord shall give thee rest from thy sorrow and from thy fear, and from the hard bondage wherein thou wast made to serve. Listen carefully that thou shalt take up this proverb against the king of Babylon, and say, How hath the oppressor ceased? The golden city ceased. Um, when the Medes and the Persians, well, let's go back for history. Jerusalem did a lot of wicked stuff. God got angry, and if you read the book of Jeremiah and Lamentations, God sent Babylon to be his rod of correction against Jerusalem for their wickedness. Well, after a certain period of time, uh, 70 years, if memory serves me correctly, God had the Medes and the Persians who conquered Babylon, and then they let the uh, tribe of Judah, the Jews, you could say, return back to Jerusalem to rebuild. All right? So that's what this is talking about. You know, And it shall come to pass in the day that the Lord shall give thee rest from thy sorrow and from thy fear and from the hard bondage wherein thou wast made to serve, that thou shalt take up this proverb against the king of Babylon. Okay? If you have ever read the book of, Nebuch uh, the book of Daniel, you read about King Nebuchadnezzar. Okay. Thou shalt take up this proverb against the king of Babylon and say, How hath the oppressor ceased? The golden city ceased. The Lord hath broken the staff of the wicked and the scepter of the rulers. He who smote the people in wrath with a continual stroke, he that ruleth the nations in anger is persecuted, and none hindereth. The whole earth is at rest and is quiet. They break forth into singing. Yea, the fir trees rejoice at thee, and the cedars of Lebanon sing. Now, obviously, these are figures of speech, because trees can't say things, and they can't rejoice. Trees don't have emotion. Yea, the fir trees rejoice at thee, and the cedars of Lebanon sing. Sounds thou art laid down, no feller is come up against us. Now a feller is a, you know, an axe man, you know, a, a lumberjack, you know, because they fell the trees. <clears throat> Verse 9. Hell from beneath is moved for thee to meet thee at thy coming. It stirreth up the dead for thee, even all the chief ones of the earth. It hath raised up from their thrones all the kings of the nations. All they shall speak and say unto thee, Art thou become weak as we? Art thou become like unto us? Thy pomp is brought down to the grave, and the noise of thy vials, the worm is spread under thee, and the worms cover thee. Listen carefully. How art thou fallen from heaven? How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which did, didst weaken the nations? Now, here it is 
before they were talking about the king of Babylon. And if you read the modern commentaries and your modern Bibles, they'll say, oh, this is talking about the king of Babylon. But when did an earthly king fall from heaven? When? Never. Never. And then they'll explain away, oh, Lucifer, that's a, that's a terrible mistranslation. Well, they got that from the Latin Vulgate Bible, okay? And the word Lucifer has reference to being a light bearer. Uh, matter of fact, L-U, to this day, has reference to light. You've heard of lux, lumens, like illuminated, illum illuminati. L-U ha is a is a Latin word that has reference to light. Um, you know, so basically Lucifer means light bearer. Have you ever read where in the Bible where it says, for no marvel, for, sa um, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light? Okay. Matter of fact... Let me look that up. Okay, that's in uh, 2 Corinthians 11, 14. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Have you ever noticed all the, uh, what was it, the Mayans and the Aztecs, the Incas, the Egyptians, they all worship the sun god, not S-O-N, but the S-U-N. Satan is an angel of light, but his light is darkness, so. All right, so let's continue. Isaiah 14, 12. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which did, didst weaken the nations? Listen carefully. For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. So, you know, this can't be an earthly king of Babylon. I mean, he fell from heaven. Okay. Verse 15. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. Didn't the Bible say that um, hell was created for the Satan and his angels? 16. They that see thee shall narrowly look upon thee and consider thee, saying, Is this the man that made the earth to tremble, that did shake kingdoms, that made the world as a wilderness and destroyed the cities thereof? that opened not the house of his prisoners. All the kings of the nations, even all of them, lie in glory, every one in his own house. But thou art cast out of thy grave like an abominable branch, and as the raiment of those that are slain, thrust through with the sword, that go down to the stones of the pit, as a carcass trodden under feet. Thou shalt not be joined with them in burial, because thou hast destroyed thy land and slain thy people. Mm. The seed of evildoers shall never be renowned. Prepare, oof, wow, listen to this. Prepare slaughter for his children, for the iniquity of their fathers, that they do not rise nor possess the land, nor fill the face of the world with cities. Doesn't sound like cities are a good place to be, huh? A lot of wickedness in cities. Um, prepare slaughter for his children, for the iniquity of their fathers, that they do not rise nor possess the land, nor fill the face of the world with cities. For I will rise up against them, saith the Lord of hosts, and cut off from Babylon the name and remnant and son and nephew, saith the Lord. See, Babylon was totally destroyed. The city was destroyed. 
and it's never been inhabited even to this day. Verse 23. I will also make it a possession for the bittern, B-I-T-T-E-R-N, it's a type of bird, and pools of water. Uh, the bittern is a, a water bird, sort of like an egret. I will also make it a possession for the bittern and pools of water. I will sweep it with the bes besom of destruction, saith the Lord of hosts. A besom is a type of broom. If you were to take a stick and straw and make a homemade broom, you know, you would take the straw, wrap it around the stick, and then wrap it with string, you would have basically, the straw would be like in a cylinder shape, it would be kind of a roundish shape, not round like a ball, just the outline so that when you sweep the floor, um, it's not wide and straight like a regular broom, but that's what a besom is. I will also make it a possession for the bittern and pools of water, and I will sweep it with the besom of destruction. So the Lord's going to sweep it with a like a broom of destruction, saith the Lord of hosts. You know, <laughs> you think about it, what do you use a broom for? You use it to clean the house and get, sweep the dirt and the filth and the garbage out of the house, right? And that's what the Lord's going to do. He's going to sweep it with his broom of destruction, saith the Lord of hosts. The Lord of hosts hath sworn, saying, Surely, as I have thought, so shall it come to pass, and as I have purposed, so shall it stand. That I will break the Assyrian in my land and upon my mountains tread him underfoot then shall his yoke depart from off them and his his burden depart from off their shoulders now um the assyrians took the northern ten tribes of israel who are not the same as the jews okay the assyrians took the ten northern tribes into captivity and when the assyrians collapsed the ten tribes, um, they 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 took off. I mean, they just you know, uh, when the Assyrian army collapsed, the northern tribes of Israel hightailed it out of Dodge. You could say, they never did return to the land. They scattered. And when you talk about the the ten lost tribes, this is what you're talking about. However. Assyria couldn't conquer Jerusalem and all of Judah. And northern Israel and, and southern Judah are not the same. Israel and Judah is not the same. They had different kings, different land area. They even fought wars against each other. Think about the United States Civil War, the North and the South. Yes, they were both Americans. But if you called somebody from the South a Yankee, from New York, and they might cut your throat. I mean, you know, somebody from Georgia is not the same as somebody from New York. They both might be Americans, but Southerners and Northerners, it was the same type of deal here with Israel. So the Assyrians took the Northern tribes of Israel into captivity, and then they never returned to the land. But because they couldn't conquer Judah and Jerusalem, uh, later, Babylon came, and they did conquer Jerusalem, and they took, they killed a lot of the Jews, they killed many of them, and then took some of them into captivity. Seventy years later, the Medes and the Persians came, conquered Babylon, and then the Jews were allowed to return to Jerusalem to rebuild it. And But the thing was, is when Assyria collapsed, when the Assyrians collapsed, they... Israel never returned to the land. And to the modern theologians, northern Israel is lost. God didn't lose his people, but the modern church world has lost them. All right. So, 25. That I will break the Assyrian in my land, and upon my mountains tread him underfoot, that then shall his yoke depart from off them, 
and its burden depart from off their shoulders. This is the purpose that is purposed upon the whole earth, and this is the hand that is stretched out upon all the nations. For the Lord of hosts hath purposed, and who shall disannul it? And his hand is stretched out, who shall turn it back? In the year that King Ahaz died was this burden. Rejoice thou, rejoice not thou, whole Palestina. This is where you get the word Palestine. Okay. Rejoice not thou, whole Palestina, because the rod of him that smote thee is broken. For out of the serpent's root shall come forth a cockatrice, and his fruit shall be a fiery flying serpent. That's a wild verse. And the firstborn of the poor shall feed, and the needy shall lie down in safety. I will kill thy root with famine, and he shall slay the rem thy remnant. Howl, O gate, cry, O city, thou whole Palestina, art dissolved. For there shall come from the north a smoke, and none shall be alone in his appointed times. What shall one then answer the messengers of the nation? That the Lord hath founded Zion, and the poor of his people shall trust in it. All right, that's the end. This is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to Jesus, who is the Lamb of God, slain before the foundation of the world. Amen.